Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Saga and I have pretty much just finished my aerospace engineering masters or integrated masters should I say at the University of Sheffield. So in this video today, what I want to share is my advice on how to get a graduate role if you have studied an engineering degree at university. If you enjoy what you're watching, please subscribe to my channel and like the video and also share it with someone else who you think it might find useful. So let's uh, get straight into this video then. So, you know, you've got your degree and you've also applied to your favorite company and you get accepted into your first choice company. I mean, you know, that's what happens, right? You get your degree, you go and work for the company that you want to. Um, no, actually, that's not the case most of the time. And let me explain. So it's quite often nowadays that a lot of the engineering jobs available for graduates are open to any disciplined engineer. So you could be a, an aerospace engineer, a mechanical engineer, and still get into the same role. And this is true even for software engineering. You could have some roles that say, as long as you have a STEM degree, you're eligible to apply. And this makes it so much more difficult into getting your dream career because you have to think about that. Not only are you competing with other people in your cohort, but you're competing with other people who've studied an engineering degree full stop or a STEM degree and are across the country. So the chance of you getting that dream grad placement is not that high actually. So you have to be aware that this is the reality and to be able to compete at that high level you have to do so much extra things that I have talked about in other videos and so definitely go check those out. I think one of the main things is that when you do go to university you really do underestimate the competition between other students across the country especially when you graduate and that's something you only really you know, start to understand when you are in your final year and are applying to these grad placements. So ultimately what I want to try and just emphasize is that don't expect to walk straight from your degree into your dream job because it's very unlikely to happen. However, never lose hope on where you see yourself in the future and always pursue that passion and dream that you have of a certain company that you want to work for or whatever else you want to do. It doesn't have to be working for a specific company, but you know, as long as you keep that um, vision and drive, then you can work towards it, especially even if you don't get it in your first year after university. So having said it's a, it's a tough market out there, let me share some of my tips that have worked for me um, to get a grad role and hopefully you know it can help you guys out as well. So stay tuned for this. So one of the first things that comes with applying for jobs is generally to send your CV in via online or whatever. So your CV is one of the, the first things that the employer or company would see and that's what I want to really talk about in this section. So a lot of people strive for this, you know, this perfect, you know, all good CV. But in actuality, that's not the case because every person you show a CV to will have some comment on what they should add or what you should take away. So, you know, you're never really going to get this, you know, elusive, perfect CV because it just doesn't really exist. Everyone has an opinion on what should be there and what shouldn't. So I'll give you some advice on what I used on my CV that worked well, but it's up to you if you want to adopt it or not. So my first tip with CVs is to be more descriptive as to how you use your skills and tools. So instead of just listing tools in a bullet point section, try and intertwine them in explaining how you use these with your various experiences that you have or projects that you worked on. And this way, you're going to give the person reading the CV an actual context around your competency with these tools and technologies. Also linking to this first point is my second point, which is don't be subjective because I've seen a lot of people on CVs, they just sort of write down the skills and put some arbitrary ranking out of five. And it's pretty pointless to put that because the recruiter doesn't know any reference on there as to you know how good you are for each of those. So I personally just feel as though it's, it's just a useless use of space on your CV. And I'm pretty sure the recruiter doesn't even understand what you're meaning because it's very subjective and there's no conclusive proof as to how good you are in one of those skills. My third tip is to really tailor your CV to the company's values and what they stand for because you want to show to the recruiter that you're someone that can easily seamlessly fit into the company culture and 
how the company works. And if you're able to highlight where you've applied your values that are the same as the company's, then they're more likely to progress your application further. So my fourth tip with your CV is just to make sure it's really easy to follow for the recruiter because they barely spend any time on each CV. So you wanna try and make it as easy and simple to understand where the things they can find are, such as your education, your experience, and your projects that you've worked on. And you can do this by making sure the formatting is the same and consistent throughout like the whole CV. And you have to think of it in a way where you're sort of creating the UX of an app or a website and you want to make sure the workflow is really easy to follow through. And that's my final tip about CVs. So on your route to securing a graduate placement, you're probably going to have to go through an assessment center. And the ways these assessment centers are done, they're very different. I think it depends on the company really, but I'll go over what I had to do and the ways that you can pre prepare for my style of assessment centers. But before I share that, I wanna say assessment centers and interviews often go hand in hand. And if you do want to know more about how you can uh, be better at performing in interviews, check out my other video. I'll put a little card at the top so you can click on it and watch it after this one. But uh, anyway, back to assessment centers. So in the main assessment center I had, um, there was a series of interviews I had to do, a series of uh, individual exercises and a group exercise. And this all spanned for about half a day and it was all done virtually because of the whole coronavirus thing going on at the time, which I mean, there still is right now, but hey, hopefully it'll be different for a lot of people in the future. So in all honesty, I didn't really prepare for the group exercises or individual exercises Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. because they were mostly those behavioral and um, sort of situation specific exercises so there's nothing really you can research or learn about the exercises themselves however what I did have to research on beforehand was a bit more about the company and specifically a technology trend that I was interested in myself and these things I had to share with them in the interview itself. So ultimately, the assessment center is not really that difficult because you don't need to prepare a lot of information and so on. The main reason for the assessment center from my understanding is to see how well you perform working with others, how you generally come across as a person, and ultimately, if you have the behavioral and technical understanding to suit the role that, that you've applied for and you know ultimately the best advice I can give to prepare for an assessment center like this is just to be yourself there's no point pretending who you are in the assessment center because they'll quickly realize that you're not a right fit when you go to your graduate role and will probably kick you out after the first year because most graduate roles you're on probation there for you know six uh, six months or so so there's no point you know, pretending who you are in your assessment center, you might as well show who the real you are. And if you fit well with the company, then that's great. If not, then maybe you need to either change who you are as a person or apply elsewhere. So those two were my real specific advice on how to get a graduate role. And I have another, like, it's not a specific advice on getting a graduate role, but it's the sort of mind frame I think you have to have for when you are applying for graduate roles. So stick around and also remember to subscribe and like if you haven't already done so and you are enjoying this content and learn something new. But yeah, onto my last thing I want to talk about for this video. So the last thing I really want to share is how you have to be open to new industries, especially as a graduate. So if you are in engineering, which I presume you are because that's why you're watching this video, that you would already know how quick technology advances and the fact that you started your degree maybe three, four, five years ago is, is a long time in this grand scheme of how tech evolves and it's very likely that the demand from when you started your degree is very different to the demand that's currently needed for engineers because you know there's no requirement for you to stick to aerospace if you studied aerospace you can go into another discipline if you see there's more future and more growth potential in that area so if you've stuck around to the end of the video it's great and uh, i thank you a lot for listening to what i have to say and hopefully it can help you guys in the future to you know get your careers kick-started and 
all the best for that. And if you do find my content useful, again, just subscribe and like this video as well. Check out my other videos because there's a lot of good content. If you are still in university, there's a lot of advice that I have on my channel. So yeah, be sure to check those out and uh, I shall see you in a future video, guys. Thanks a lot.